that word give it life. It gives it understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this broadcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall shout. Meditation is the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? Christ is my firm foundation is the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful through so why would he feel now he won't
Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? You say he would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Our God will never let us down. He's a faithful God. You're welcome to church. Welcome somebody by your side. Say you're welcome to church. May you be richly blessed. We welcome our King Billy people. Our King Billy Center, we welcome you. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone and people that um, have traveled. And people that have seen me, I'm now welcoming you now. So, because some people have seen me last week. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's bow our heads as we pray together. Father, we thank you. We are grateful, Lord, for another month. This is the month, the seventh month. You have taken us through the six month and we are alive today by your grace. And we have come to give you thanks, to appreciate you. We ask, Lord, that you receive all the thanks given in the name of Jesus. Thank you for every family in this church. Thank you for all the children that are born into every family. Thank you so much, Lord, for all the husbands, all the wives, all the bachelors. I mean, the, the youth. Thank you for the teenagers. Thank you for our children. Thank you because we have reasons, Lord, to celebrate you at all times. Thank you, Father, for the testimonies of deliverance you have done in the life of your daughter. Thank you so much, Lord God Almighty. Our heart is full of praise. We say, God, receive our thanksgiving. For favoring us, receive all our praise. That in this church, you did not put us to shame. Lord, we say we thank you. Even for those who are watching us online, all our friends and partners, and those who will even come across this video later, Father, we want to thank you because they are alive. That's why they can watch. Father, we give you praises on their behalf in Jesus' name. Lord, once again, this money speak to us Amen. and bless our hearts. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's, let's have a seat. Let's start by reading Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verses 1. From verses 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfy thy mouth with good things? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made his ways, he made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. This morning, I'll be talking on the topic, the great physician. The 
the great physician. Now, when we talk about a physician in our day-to-day -day life, you discover that a physician is someone who is a trained medical doctor. Is trained medical doctor. Not just with a first degree as a medical doctor. He must have gone to further studies and he has become a consultant. When you say someone is a consultant, he has become a teacher of doctors. He has become a teacher of doctors. Let's use uh, UCH for example. When you go to the UCH, the people you see that they say they are consultants, they are playing two roles. And I was told maybe they are even having two sources of money. They are operating as a doctor. And they are also operating as a teacher. They are the ones that are teaching those who are to become doctors. Not that alone, they are, to, they, are, they are mentors to young doctors. So, you know, you go to UCH and people begin to complain. Say, ah, if you go to UCH, ah, before they attend to you, you're almost dead. Because when you go there, they will check this, they will check that, go this, do this, do this. I mean, is that not what people say about UCH? They say it's better just go to, ah, that UCH, their wahala is too much. Their problem is too much. Because it's a teaching hospital. People have forgotten the word teaching. University teaching hospital. So it's a teaching. Now, people have forgotten the word teaching. Even those who are educated, they will blame in the place. <clears throat> and say that uh, they just have to do this, they just have to do that. You have forgotten that that hospital is not only to treat people. It is also to teach people to become a better doctors and also not to, to students to become doctors to mentor young doctors so when do you see every department there is a consultant so when you see a doctor other doctor will attend to you they say what's happened to you they write everything but they will never prescribe anything until they take your file to the, to the consultant it is a consultant that will now see what the other doctors, young doctors have seen. And both student doctor, they can look at you, they can do that. And those that are doctors, they will do this and that. Everything, he will now take it and say, the consultant, you know, uh, um, uh, appointment date, Abi, is so, so and so and so day. And when you now come to see the consultant, he will read what he had, everything that has been said, all the tests, all the this and that, that, you know, some things. Then, before you begin to begin to attend to that patient. So, that consultant could be called a physician. Praise the Lord. They use the word physician for them. But now, we are talking about the great physician. Because if the consultant is a pediatrician, for example, is a conductant pediatrician that is doctor that attends to children. He will never handle something that has to do with urology problem. There are consultants urologists. There are consultants opticians. There are consultants, you know, a lot of things, there are a lot of every aspect of human health. There are consultants that are in charge of every area. And he will not double into another person's problem. After he has finished his own line, Abe, he will recommend you to another consultant. For such a person to have a overall health. But now we are talking about the one that takes care of human's life. Not only the body, but even the spirits. And even what? The soul. And that's what we are talking about. The great physician. The one that when you get to his clinic. And I want to say that you are in this clinic this morning. Amen. <laughs> and he is here. 
to take care of every aspect of your life. He is going to examine you. And how does he examine you? He examines you through the word that you are hearing. You are examined through the presence of the Holy Spirit. That is checking every aspect of your life. The Bible says for example he sent his word. And it healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. So the word of God. Is to give you an overall view. Of the power and the ability of the great physician to operate in your life. When David was composing this psalm, these songs, today being a day of thanksgiving, we are thanking God for what he has done since the beginning of this year. He has preserved us. He has taken care about so many things regarding our lives. But we are telling you this morning that our God is here to do much more. Can I hear an amen? David said, Bless the Lord, hold my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And he now began to look at it. He said, This God, this Lord, he forgives you your iniquities. So the great physician take care of the problem of sin. The medical doctors in the hospital. The consultant, they cannot take care of the problem of sin. When they cancer somebody, what is the cause? Uh, this and that. Do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you do this? Do you do that? When lad, did you go to visit the toilet? How many times do you do so and so? They do all those things. And of course, there are problems that are induced or caused by sin. Do you agree with me? A medical doctor cannot see that. Because... Jesus Christ healed a particular man. A man who has been bedridden. A man that he healed. And when Jesus Christ told him, take care of your bed and walk. Now he did not see Jesus Christ again. In fact, if you remember that story, the man was eventually cast out of the temple. Because he said that, he that healed me said I should take my bed and go. And said, so who is that person? He did not even know how to explain that person. And the Pharisees were confused. They called the parent. Is this your, your child? Is it true that he's born blind? They said, it's our child. He's born blind. But now that he has come seen, we cannot tell. Ask him. He's of age. Now, later when Jesus met him, at another time, Jesus said, you have been made whole. Sin no more. Is that not so? That was sin like this not, will not come upon you. And Jesus Christ was making it known that one of the problem, the cause of the problem of that person is sin. Hello, hello, hallelujah. One of the problems is what? Is sin. So, doctors cannot see that. But the great physicians can see that. And it's available to forgive sins. To make sure that the sins are forgiven. No wonder James chapter 5 said, tells us, he said, if any man sick among you, let him sing psalms. Is any man, sorry, is any man married? Let him, is any man sick? Let him call for the elder of the church. Let him be prayed for. Let him be anointed with oil in the name of the Lord. If he has committed any sin, it shall be forgiven him. Are you following me? Which means that the great physician can forgive sin. If sin is the reason why that problem is in the life of that person he said that the person's sins shall be forgiven so when David was saying the Lord is the one who forgiver gives you your iniquities so the great physician forgives sins and of course he healed from diseases so he's also healed from all your diseases not just one consultant who is specialized in a particular aspect of sickness and he does not, cannot double into another aspect of sickness but this great physician the Bible says he healed from all your disease, I don't know the kind of disease that is in your life is it disease that is physical, is it a disease that is internal, is it there are some diseases that are emotional that's why he said 
he healed. You know, who healed? I mean, from all your diseases. Then who redeemed thy life from destruction? Whatever is threatening your life, whether you know it or you don't know it, he said this great physician can see it. That this great physician, when he examines you, he understands that there is a destruction that is awaiting you in life, the present, and in the future. And this great physician, what does he do? He said that he redeem you from all your destruction. And I pray that you shall be redeemed today. From every destruction that is remaining in the rest of this year, it shall not come close to you. I said, shall not come near you. He will heal from all your destruction in the name of Jesus. Say, so He redeemed, He did it from thy disease, He redeemed thy life from destruction. Then, not that alone, He crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. He crowned thee. This great physician, now, He will, can also make a life of a man to be beautiful. He can put crown. The man that has no crown, he can give him crown. And I see somebody this morning, the Lord God Almighty will restore your crown. That crown is your glory. He restored it. He put back the crown. He put back the glory that the enemy has taken away. He can restore that glory. He can restore that crown. That's why he's a great physician. He understand what made that crown to be lost what made that glory to be lost and he can bring that glory back into place he said david said you know you understand that david he said who crowned thee with loving kindness you remember david a shepherd boy mr somebody that was nobody we even when the issue of who is to be the king the, the in, in the land of israel and of course and Samuel came to the house of Jesse to anoint somebody to become king. And, of, and, uh, and, Jesse, and Samuel told Jesse, bring all your children. And all the children were arranged. And David was not there. Because Jesse felt that when we are talking about children, these are the real children. And one more giddy lily. Are you following me now? If we are looking for children, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And some of you say seven is a perfect number, Abby. But when God was looking at who is to be crowned, God looked at one, God said no. He looked at two, he said no. He looked at three, he said no. You know, some people say, ah, I'm the firstborn in my house. So because of that, I'm the glory of our family. Who told you that? If God does not crown you, being the firstborn is nothing. Is somebody hearing me? There are a lot of firstborn in the Bible whose position was changed. And the firstborn, being the firstborn, did not count, does not matter. It may even be another middleborn that become the glory of the family. And I'm seeing somebody today, whether you are the firstborn in your father's house, or you are the lastborn, or you are the middleborn, you will be the crown of that family. Your amen is weak. I said the Lord will restore your crown. That is what he does. That's the great physician. He understood what is to be fixed in that life. What is missing in that life. And so David was not even invited. Until number one to seven failed the test of, of, of being crowned. They failed the test. And, uh, and of course, and, and, and Samuel was you know, surprised and said, Are these all your children? The first question is that bring all your what? Children. But from one number one to seven and they face the test of crownship. They face the test of being crowned. And the man was said, are these all your children? Am I in the wrong place? But this was a Samuel who had God. Who always had God clearly. Go to the house of Jesse. I have appointed a king for my people Israel. And he now got to that place. Bring all your children. They brought as far as he is concerned. Jesse, Mr. Jesse, these are my children. If it is kingship matter, from number one to seven, you should see one. And all of them failed the test. And he said, Ah, are these all your children? 
Say, well, I remember there is one. He's in the bush. He's a bush boy. You did not ask for somebody who can tender animal. If you have said I should bring a farmer, I should bring a poultry attendant in my family. I know who to call. <laughs> but you are talking about somebody to be a king. It, not a poultry attendant. Not somebody who is, uh, uh, who is into animal husbandry. It's not somebody who is, uh, what do you call that? You know, you know, praise God. Not a shepherd. If you are asking for a shepherd, I will not call, you know, the first bond or the second bond. Those people, they are soldiers. Those people, they have the muscle, they have the strength, they have the ability. They are tall because the first king of Israel was a tall man, Saul. So when the first born, Eliab, I think that not Eliab. When Eliab also appeared, Eliab was also tall. Even if he's not as tall, you know, as King Saul, this one is on the pathway of being, maybe by the time he eats, he chops a little bit, he will become taller. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. Somebody is here today. The Lord will restore your crown. The Lord will give you that rightful position. It doesn't matter. It's the Lord that crowned it. Is the Lord that crowned it? He said, He was the one that crowned. David remember that. Look, is this God that crowned me? It is not my family. If it is my family, I do not fit. They did not even remember me in the first place. Until Samuel said, We are not going to sit down. Until that boy you think does not matter. Until he's invited from the bush. And he was invited. And how do you honor a king? How do you honor? A man of honor, you have to stand up to welcome that person. Hallelujah. And the Samuel said, We are not going to sit down, including myself. If Samuel will not sit down, who born? <laughs> that is uh, for our audience, online audience. That is our, our Nigerian English. Say, who born you? Eh? Who is that person who, if Samuel will not sit down, so Jesse will sit down, Elia will sit down, Shama will sit down. So we are all going to stand, we will not sit. Until that Randu boy that does not matter until he appears. And so, by the time the boy was coming, the Bible said the boy was ruddy. He was still with the shepherd dress. He was not even clean up. He was coming like that. He just said, Daddy is, is calling me. Help me take care of this animal. And he came. Immediately when he appeared, all of them were already standing. And God said, That's him. That's him. That's the next king. Oh, the spirit of God is saying there is somebody here. You are due for crowning. You are due for exaltation. In this month, you'll be exalted. Before the end of this year, you'll be announced in high places. He came in and said, does him. He was poor oil. Samuel carried the oil. The Bible said he was anointed in the presence of his brothers. But don't forget, you call them his brothers. Uh, his enemies were among his brothers. Among your families at times, there are enemies there. People that are jealous of you. Jealous of your glory. You will not know that until after some time. When he was to go to the field to give his brother, the first three brothers, food. At the instruction of his father. Listen to jealousy. Be careful of jealousy. Be careful of what? Jealousy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That ceremony happened. Everybody went back. You know David went back that day. Back to where? To the bush. Hey. There is always a curious time. A curious time is an appointed time. The hand of God is upon your life. The glory of God is coming upon your life. There is a time of your manifestation. The time of your manifestation will not fail you. It will not elude you. In the name of Jesus. There is an appointed time. He went back to the farm. He went back to the field. To continue his work as a shepherd boy. But one day again. Hey, there is always a one day. Another day came. His father signed to him. 
can you imagine you have seven children three are part of the armies of israel they rise four five six and uh, seven that is about four other people they were in the family you want to send a message to find out your sons that are on the battlefield how are they faring how are they doing you want to give them food eh? they did not send the rest for they have to send the one that is busy taking care of the family business taking care of the sheep and the goats is the same one they sent for he said come daddy said you should come daddy here am i i want to send you to your brothers may you give, not give back to useless children i say may your children not be useless at times if you don't watch your children if you don't teach them if you don't instruct them they will become a pain in your neck in the future the bible says, children are the heritage of the lord as arrow is in the hands of the mighty you have to shoot your children as an arrow but when you shoot your arrow and your arrow cannot bring you know back a prey that is a useless arrow and so it is the boy that is in the village i mean the bush that was invited to go and take care break put things to his brother but don't worry because it was another day of announcements hallelujah praise god the boy did not complain he came but when he got to the field that day he got to the battlefield he saw a man a giant roaring abusing israel abusing the king as if that is enough abusing the king the, the god of israel and david was wondering what is going on but when his brother saw him Eliab said eh, i know the pride in your heart don't worry jealousy people will call you name don't bother your head hello don't worry your head when they say somebody is a backbiter back he's always at the back hallelujah let him continue to backbite you just continue to front your front line or front <laughs> shout hallelujah somebody you know i know the, the i know the, i know the pride in your heart in other words eh? because i'm going spoil oil on you that's why you don't want to become you know a shepherd boy again i know we who did you put that animals who is in charge you have come to see the battle and the boy said daddy sent me to you these are the things he said i should give to you and of course i said these are the things he said to you he now said is there not a cause is that not a reason why i'm here even david did not know the reason why he was there but when he got to the field the holy spirit began to manifest you know the manifold grace of god upon his life there is manifold manifestations that is our focus this this month manifold manifestation he began to say is there not a cause and before you know it he now had this man ranting called goliath then he now said come who is this uncircumcised philistine who is this uncircumcised philistine who is speaking against the army of god who is speaking against the god of israel who is this uncircumcised philistine i want to go and fight him if nobody can come out i'm ready to go out to come out and fight him they say ah for the first time after so many days there was an israelite who said you want to confront goliath and how old was this boy about 17 years old amen you want to confront you know a giant they took him to king saul and said we did this boy say you want to go and fight to king we want to tell you you know and the king said oh boy my boy my boy you are a small boy let me tell you something beware of backsliders beware of what talk to me there are people who have lost the touch of god there are people that god has shifted away from that god has rejected them if they are if that is the company you keep they will continue to pull you down they will continue to discourage you if you say i can do it say ah you're a small boy 
You are young in redemption family. You are young. We have been there for long. Eh? It is because it's just is it a reverend message? He's just shocking you. He's just shocking you. We we have been hearing it for 15, 20 years. So which means it does not shock you any longer. Run away from that person. Though. That is not a company to keep. Anybody that is discouraging you, anybody that the giant in you that want to come and say, slow down, slow down, cool down. You hear a seminar. You want to launch into that business. Somebody say, ah, the terrain is bad. The terrain is bad. The terrain is bad. Anybody that bring message of discouragement, run for that person. No? King Saul. He said, you are a small boy. You see, that man, from his youth, he has been a fighter. He said this. He's not just starting today. Maybe 20, 30 years, 40 years of he's been fighting. You are just a small boy. You can't confront this Goliath. This Philistine. Oh, may God give you testimonies. And may you keep track with your testimony. David said, King, let me tell you stories of my life. There was a time as a shepherd boy, I was taking care of the sheep. Lion came from nowhere and wanted to attack. I rose against lion. I, I pursue lion. I beat lion. Lion ran away. I confronted lion. Another time, beard came. The beard has even caught one of the, of, 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 of the lamp. I pursue. With ordinary club, I kill the bear. And I deliver my animal from you know, the bear. He said, look, this uncircumcised Philistine shall be just one like any of these animals. In other words, they are animals. This one is not, cannot confront lion. I confront a lion. This one cannot confront bear. I confront a bear. He's going to be just like them. Allow me to go. And you know the rest of the story? He went. He conquered Goliath. There are some there. Why? There is a crown upon his head. There is a glory anointing upon his life. Now, something is coming upon your life this month. It is called glory. It is a crown of glory. It is a crown of excellence. It's called the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is distinguishing you. The Lord is separating you. Among your equal, you will stand. You will shine. You will take possession. You will conquer ground. If you believe, say amen. What are we saying? David said, he crowned me with loving kindness and tender mercies. Then he satisfied my youth with good things so that my youth is renewed like eagles. Hallelujah. David said, I don't grow old because there is a regular supply of every good things. And I'm saying today, with all the problem in our land and in the nations of the world, you will not know trouble. You will not experience affliction. The God who supplied our needs, he will satisfy you with good things. Shout hallelujah. I'm only trying to let you see when we talk about the great physician, he takes care of your spirits, takes care of your soul, and takes care of your what? Of your body. Takes care of every aspect of your life. Your finances, this money shall be healed. Your marriage in the name of Jesus shall be healed. Everything going on in your body, in your mind, there shall be healing in the name of Jesus. This is the testimony of the great physician. You remember in the uh, scripture, the Bible reading that was read to us, Jesus Christ went to the temple. And when he got to the temple, they delivered unto him the book of Isaiah. Now, look at it. There is always a one day. The normal custom is that they know, you know Jesus Christ, many of them did not like Jesus. But they knew that Jesus Christ was a teacher. Was a rabbi. He came to the temple. You know that just like some uh, our orthodox churches, there is what you call, you know, uh, there, there, there's what you call the liturgy. 
Okay? Everything that has to be done from the beginning of this year to the end. They have planned it. Are you listening to me? That's why we call them orthodox. They don't give an allowance that you want to talk about this that the Holy Spirit may change it. Abi? Mm. We are Pentecostal because we pray. Yes, we have plans. We want to do this this month. We want to do this month. We want to do this month. You know, and, uh, and of course, we now leave it to the Holy Spirit to also guide. The Holy Spirit, you can say you want to talk about that and the Holy Spirit says, no, what I have for my people is different today. You understand what I'm saying? But they are own. I'm sure the Bible reading, if you go to Anglican and all these churches, the Bible reading for every Sunday is already written down. Maybe that day in the temple, in the Jewish worship, what is on the timetable to be read? It is this place. But the question there is that why is it that that was what was on the reading, uh, what do you call it? The reading timetable for that service. And why is it that it was that day that Jesus Christ came into the temple? The Bible said they deliver unto him the book of uh, Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. What is written in Isaiah? And that is Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1. It was what is written in the book of Isaiah. They opened it. Sir, Augusta, this is our reading text. Read it. And let's hear what you want to say about it. And Jesus Christ, the Bible says, And there was delivered unto him the book of prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. That is Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The great physician is saying, he has anointed me in my preaching the poor is taking the poor people are taken care of to preach the gospel to the poor he had sent me to heal the broken hearted you are here this morning if you are broken hearted there is healing for you somebody follow me there is healing for you you are shattered. You are broken hearted. You are disappointed. Things are happening. This and that. He said, I am the great physician. There is healing provision. He said, for the broken hearted to preach deliverance to the captives. Oh, they say it is demon. Medical doctor cannot see demon oppressing you. But the great physician can see it. He understands that what you need is a deliverance. And he has come. He has come for that purpose. He's anointed for that purpose. He said, he has anointed me anointed me to bring deliverance to the captives if there is anything that is keeping you in one cage or the other in the name of jesus the name that is above all name you shall be delivered Amen. i say you shall be delivered <coughs> to deliverance to the captives and recover, recovering of sight to the blind whether spiritual blindness or physical blindness the great physician says i am equal to the task that is the part of my ministry. And to set at liberty those that are bruised. Those that are bruised. Those that are shattered. Those that are wounded. Those that are bruised. He said, I am to bring liberty to those that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Oh, this is your year. It shall be your acceptable year. It's a year of our lifting amen you will climb higher it is an acceptable year to pray the accepted year of the lord the bible says and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister you know that is minister in charge of the temple he gave it to the minister and sat down the bible says something happened for the first time in the temple that day the eyes of all of people in the in the in the worship center were fasting on jesus their eyes were fasting on him and the bible says and he began to say unto them this day you have been reading it for one thousand years to two thousand years but this day the one that isaiah has written about is here today you are seeing him body and flesh 
this day, with this reading, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Don't worry. Anytime, any day, there are skeptical people. There are people that will not fall in line. Because that day, some people have forgotten. What did they say? They said, and all bear him witness. And wonder at the gracious words which proceed out of his mouth. They know that he was not teaching like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They saw that the atmosphere of the temple changed that day. He said, I am here. And I want to announce to somebody, Jesus is here this morning. The great physician is here. It does not matter how long you have been in that situation. You have been stumbling, stop stumbling in the journey of life. He said, this is my ministry. He said, I am here. It is the year of the acceptable year of the Lord. It is the day that he has made. He said, this day, this day, this day, this day, your deliverance shall be completed. This day, your healing shall be made sure. This day, you shall be lifted. This day, you shall become blessed. Every aspect of your life shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. I am the one that, not the one that is saying it. The one who has sent me. I am reading the account of his ministry to you. And the account of this ministry is saying that I am anointed. I am the Lord, the Savior. I am the great physician. I am coming and I have come. And to bless you. Say this day. Tell your neighbor this day. Is your day. Oh say this day is my day. Oh this day is my day. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. And they said. Is not this Joseph's son. And he said unto them. You will surely say unto, the, um, unto me. This proverb. Physician. You know he's a physician. Heal yourself. Whatsoever we have had done in Capernaum. So also here. So also do here in your country. And he said verily I say unto you. No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months. When great famine was taught was throughout all the land but unto none of them was Elias sent save unto Sarepha a city of Sidon unto a woman that was a widow do you know what Jesus was saying that day I am in my country you are saying things that we have had you do in Capernaum and other places do the miracles here and he knew their hearts that they do not honor him Say a prophet is without honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Many a times, great things that we witness through our ministry when we are out of this, when I'm, when I'm out of this church, I wonder at times, it is a body, why is it not happening? Praise the Lord. I was telling them um, yesterday, up from above, for as many of you, if you're on the platform, First, uh, I'm sorry, last Thursday of every month, we have a program online. We call it Night of Help. It's hosted by our team in the US. And people will join from US, join from UK, join from Nigeria, from different places. We put it on the platform for those who are here also to join. But some people, because of their data, they cannot join just for one hour. Praise God. Or you see it. It does not make any meaning to you. And the topic that we advertised up in, on the flyer is Mercy Speaks. That was what we discussed about. Last month, up, last month is, no, upper month is Rise and Walk. But this one is Mercy Speaks. And that is the word that God gave to me. And people heard the word, just short word, and we went to the serious prayers. There is a particular sister who is a medical doctor, a dentist, you know, in, 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 in London. She's been looking for a job. You know, you can be in an advanced country, you are just doing some job, managed job. But a job that can file for her, a job that's worth it. She's been looking for a job, 
I remember when I was uh, in the state, she even called me that she was going for interview, that I should pray for her again. And this, she's been looking for a job, not for one year, not for two years. Praise God. But do you know that we had that program on Thursday? On Friday, she had another interview. She went to her interview. Mercy spoke concerning her life. Because she went for that interview and they said she passed the interview and they gave her a job. They said she's starting job the second day. It gave her automatic employment. The job of her dream. Mercy spoke. I see somebody here. Mercy will speak for you. And this month, Mercy will speak for you. And so, when people, I can give you another person was even almost at the verge of even committing suicide is in the United States. And of course, she's been, he's been struggling, struggling and he's becoming a problem. And he's looking for a job. He's not getting the job of, of, I mean, of his dream. And he was struggling. And that one want to even affect you know, his relationship with his wife. And she, he, I mean, was part of this meeting. And I mean, the previous one, just about last month or so. And of course, now, things just opened called me to pray also you know for him at a critical time i did that and i tell you that he got a job not only that he got that job he was given official car the anointing speaks jesus is the name that is above me when you pray in the name of jesus and you believe. But you don't say, maybe I'm the one that preaching today, I'm not the one that, that preach at another and say, is he not brother so and so? Is he pastor so and so? You know the worst kind of things you see in the church? I'm sure none of you here saw the day I was ordained. Praise God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You are not the one I was ordained. You are not the one I was commissioned. But you know the worst is that among you, to, to, you today, if somebody is trained and we say, okay, this person, we ordain him as a pastor. He's ordained as a deacon. This is the person you have been calling brother so and so. That you can even beat, you know, have a banter with and say, Bra, brother, and things like that. But now he's not a pastor. They say he's not his pastor. He said, pastor. Is he not brother? I'm who you are. You are still looking at him with the eyes of, of yesterday. You don't know that something has changed. He's not the one that called himself a pastor. He's not the one that ordained himself. Abby, it was God that counted him worthy. Because a leader, a minister is taken from the midst of his people. Are you following me now? Peter said, look among you. People that have honest reports. People of integrity. That we may ordain into this office. And that is how the first sets of seven deacons were chosen. And later, one of these deacons became an evangelist. Philip the evangelist. And they began to call him by the name of what? An evangelist. Who ordained him? God. In the midst of God's people. Now, such a person is expected to be respected. Because if he's not respected, there is nothing that comes from him that can bless you. That's what Jesus is saying. They say, is he not the son of carpenter? Is he not the son of Joseph? We know his family. We know his brothers. They said it severally in Nazareth. They said it, they commonized the anointing. They commonized the grace of God. They commonized the message. Some were not blessed. But Jesus now said, look, I am not here for everybody one person that's why he told them the story of isaiah despite the famine isaiah was sent to where to sarifa to one person hallelujah i don't know who is the one person that i'm sent to this money i don't know who is one person that god is going to change his story this money i don't know the person one person that the great physician want to sort out this morning in every aspect of his life may that person be you I said, may that person be you in the name of Jesus. If you believe that God has sent me to you, shout a louder amen. That's it. 
was telling them, he said, look, the spirit of God is upon me. I am sent for this. If you don't believe, that is your problem. But whosoever believes. What we talk about to heal, the physician is to make well restoration of health. That's part of what I've said. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 3. Restore number 2. Restoration of soul to spiritual health. That is what I have also said. I'm just tidying up what I've said. Restoration of spiritual life. You forgive thee thy sins. Who forgive thee thy iniquities. The Lord Jesus, it is healing. It is the same word. You know, I mean, it's the same healing now that is used in different ways. Praise God. Restoration of spiritual health and repairs injury caused by sin. That is what happened. Jeremiah 30 verse 17 and Psalms 41 verse 4. Point number 3. It is the restoration and deliverance of the afflicted land. Even a land can be sick. A land need a great physician. You will see that in the stories of uh, in Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. If my people, if the land is sick, if the land is this and that, if there is sought, but if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, I will forgive them their sin. I will do what? I will heal their land. May your hand land be healed. Amen. Your destiny is your land. May it be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, you see, it happens like that. Isaiah chapter, chapter, Isaiah chapter 19, verse 22. You can write it. Point number four, it applied to forgiveness of sin. I've said, talk about that. Number five, it refers to purification of an offense or breach of ceremonial law. In 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 20, if you breach a law, there must be an atonement for it. There must be a healing for it. Praise God. I was telling those during the um, seminar, telling you the story of that woman who eloped with another man and of course wanted to come back. In their traditional way, there is a means of cleansing. Praise God. That she asked atonement. And the husband told me, when the woman said, hey, when I was uh, undergoing that, he did not send money to me. The man said, in their tradition, his one naira must not be part of what he's going to pay for that ritual. You know, they are not Christian. Are you listening to me? He said, if his one naira is there, there is a cost that will come upon his life. So he's to atone for what the wrong thing that he has done for cleansing. He is to pay and do all the things that need to do. The same thing, you see. Now, bring it to the spiritual. If there is a man that you are doing what is against the law of God, there must be an atonement. There must be a kind of cleansing. Praise God. Jesus said, you want to give your gift in the church? You want to give money in the church? And you remember that your brother is having a matter against you. He said, don't give that gift to him. What did he say? He said, go back. Go and make settlement with your brother before you come and offer your gift. Or else that gift is not accepted. So, there is a medium by which for reconciliation. There is a medium to settle matter. There is a medium, the Bible says, offense cannot but come. Hello? Husband and wife, father and father, family, in-laws, everybody in the church of God, Jesus said, offense, are you with me? Cannot but come. Which means, offense is a normal thing. If you find yourself in any group, anywhere, in a place of work, offense is normal. Offense cannot but come. That is the Bible. But when offense comes, offense must be resolved. Is somebody hearing me? You can't gather where you have human being and you will not be offended. Everybody in your in-laws house cannot like you the same way. Abby? Some people will say, look at the way. Your dressing, 
alone is enough to cause problems for some people. When you dress very well, say, he start, say, can you see the way she's walking? She's walking. Eh? Eh? What is shark you? Eh? It's too, it's too, it's too pompous. That is the way you walk normally, but they will read meaning. Say, can you see? Okay. When she's walking, watch her shoulder. She always do her shoulder like this. It's not a shoulder like this. She's not a shoulder like this. Eh? Can you see? Eh? Eh? Yeah? Yeah? Praise God. Hallelujah. Obelo koni. Kuzogbo to le da. Kusi wa to le wu. To sona to le mo. To le fi ta ye lor mo. Hallelujah. Bo ba gwen eshi, you are in trouble. Bo so kale lori eshi, you are in trouble. Bo joku lori eshi, you are in trouble. Everything. People will always talk. Offense cannot but come. That is the Bible. But under the ceremonial law, even in the Old Testament, which is also adopted in the New Testament, if there is offense, offense must be atoned for by what? By settlement and by forgiveness and by repentance. Is somebody hearing me? Because that is one of the way that healing will come. So, because you have misunderstanding with your wife, don't turn it to third world war. If you have misunderstanding with your wife, like I told you, a friend, a pastor friend, he told, he said, told his wife, said, when they have misunderstanding, and now said, ah, my wife, let's finish this matter. If we don't conclude this one, how are we going to fight another one? Let's finish this one because another one will come. Praise God. So you begin to nag against your husband. Hey, don't touch me. Hey, don't. Ah, you better settle. When you settle that one, maybe another fight will come in another one month's time. Praise God. Because offense cannot but come. You people will misunderstand you, will misunderstand your intention. But that is an offense. But we are saying that if anybody is wounded, there is healing for you. The great physician fixed everything. Are you with me? And of course, it is, it is to make good that which is formerly bad. To make good that which was formerly bad. Hallelujah. They call Elisha and say, this water, as you look at this water, this water is a problem. The land is barren and the water is what? Is bitter. And Elijah said, Elisha said, go and bring salt in the cruise in the new cruise and he went to that source that is healing i said you this water from today you shall no longer bring you know bitterness the Bible said, and the water was ill unto this day when i we went to israel they told took us to where that water was healed praise god that stream is still flowing up to today god is doing something in your life that will last it will last your tenure. It will last your years. And your children will benefit from it. Your healing today shall be permanent. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the last point as we pray. Is the healer. Also means to wrap with bandage. It is called kabash. Kabash. In the land. I mean in, in Greek means. You see to wrap. A wrapper up. A bandager. In Isaiah 3 7 says, In that day shall he swore, saying, I would not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of your people. Now, what in that scripture that I'm just getting is looking at God as the kabash, the one who bandage, a bandager, all right? Somebody who do a complete healing. Somebody who do everything complete. Shout hallelujah. That is the great physician I'm introducing to you this morning. That he will heal you. I don't know whether your, your soul, he will heal your soul. I don't know why a Christian should be go and begin to have uh, depression. You want to go and commit suicide. When there is bomb in Gilead. When the great physician is there. 
What is that thing that is troubling your heart? That is tampering with your emotions? Why don't you commit it to the great healer? The great physician, the story of our life, the one who can bandage you. Why do you want to break that marriage? Why do you think that marriage cannot work again? Hallelujah. Why don't you commit it to the hands of the bandager, the healer, and trust him for what he's going to do? Why do you think that that business cannot rise? Why do you think that the one who is ready to prosper you, why are you afraid of, of poverty? Why are you afraid of death? When he is a complete healer, he's a restorer of life. And he will restore your life. Let's rise up as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, give him thanks. Lift up your two hands and say, Lord Jesus, thank you. David said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Why can't you bless the Lord also? That God, you are the complete restorer. You are my healer. You are my helper. Oh, you will, you will, you, you will heal me. The three segments of healing is the spirit, the soul, and the body. When your soul is healed, you'll be free from bitterness. You will be free from unforgiving heart, deliverance from anger and hatred, deliverance from depression, even freedom from guilt. Ebi, some people they are so guilty that the devil is just pushing them and says, God cannot forgive you. You know what you have done? Guilt is driving them. I want you to say, Lord Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you this morning. You are my great physician. Heal me, O oh Lord. Heal my spirit. Heal my soul. Heal my body. Turn it to prayer in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Every aspect of your life. Commit it to the great physician. Tell him about it. If you are traumatized. Whatever is happening in your marriage. Tell him. Lord heal my marriage. You are the great physician. Intervene in my home. What about your business? Commit your business to him. He's a great physician. Tell him to heal your business. He is a great physician. He takes care of every aspect of human's life. I'm going to pray for you shortly. But let him understand where you need healing. Where you want him to attend to. You have been cheated. Tell the Lord, heal my heart. There is, there is a pain in your life. Tell the Lord, heal my heart. Heal me, O oh Lord, and I shall be healed. Restore me, O oh Lord, this morning. I ask for restoration. Restore me, O oh God. Restore me, O oh God. Let my crown be restored. The glory that is Lord, let it be restored. They said I don't fit it. Fit in. But God can't be worthy. Can't be worthy for glory. Can't be worthy for excellence. Turn the story around in my favor. Turn the story around in my favor. Raise me, oh God. In my family, raise me, oh God. As you raise David, raise me, oh God. One eco say a looking. Oh, why ye for me looking? Oh, beg go for a me or Molono. Yano Loru Corre. One eco say a looking. Oh, why ye for me looking? Oh, go go for me or more. Yano Loru Corre. One eco say a look. They said there is no space. There is no space above. God will create one for you. As a child of God, <coughs> He will create a place for you. You will be honored. You will be honored. Your children shall excel. Can you pray? Lord, I need healing. Complete healing. My soul, let it be healed. My body, let it be healed. 
Lord, let there be healing, O God. Whatever you want God to do for you, there is confusion everywhere. Your soul shall not be confused. Thus said the Lord, you will not be confused. Thus said the Lord, you will not be put to shame. Thus said the Lord, you will not struggle. Help shall rise for you. In high places, God will raise help for you. Oni shegun la wani Jesu aba midaro oro remu ni rada ebo ti Jesu ilo di Jesus, you are a great physician. You ask me to present you to your people. This is the seventh month. There is a need for perfection. And you are the only one that can heal and heal completely. Lord, I commit your people to your hands. Every area that they have, they have opened themselves up to you. The one that human being can see, the one human being cannot see. It may be psychological, emotional, it may be their body, physical body pain or internal body pain. It may be something, Lord Jehovah God, that has to do with their business, that have to do their life. Many of them have been shamed. They said they cannot amount to anything. But Lord, I've shown them in your word, Lord Father, that you are the one that can crown a man. You are the one that can change the story of a life. You are the bandager. You are the shabak. The one who bandages. The one who wrap up. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice this morning that the Lord, the Shabbat, bring forth your healing now in the name of Jesus. Let every aspect that is require, that require healing, let it be wrapped up. What has been exposed that people can see, that shame, let it be wrapped up by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, by the power of of the Jehovah Shabbat. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatsoever. That the enemy has concluded. Concerning your life. Your family and your journey on earth. I said the story changes now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord visit your life. Amen. I speak healing. Amen. To every aspect of your life. Amen. I speak deliverance. Amen. To every aspect of your life. I speak lifting to every aspect of your life. The Lord is so good. And he will be good to you. Don't know where you have been struggling. In the midst of challenges in our nation. The Lord will send help to you. You will not struggle. You have in abundance. The Lord will satisfy you. This is the time for God to show forth his children. You will be more among those that the Lord will show forth. Amen. Your glory shall shine forth. Amen. The Bible says when men are saying they are cast down. Your language shall be you are lifted up. Amen. And that, that shall be your story. Amen. Be lifted this morning. Amen. Be healed this morning. Amen. Be lifted this morning. Amen. Let your marriage be healed this morning. Amen. Let your heart be healed this morning. Amen. Let your emotion be healed this morning. Amen. Let your business be healed this morning. In the name of Jesus. As you leave this place today. You step out into honor. You step out into glory. You step out into celebration. That job of yours. You have been doing managing job. God that is doing it elsewhere. I pray for you. The Lord will send help. You will get that job of your dream. That dream in your heart concerning business. This month it shall be given back to. And it shall run speedily. So shall it be. 
In the name of God the Father, I bless you. In the name of God the Son, I bless you. In the name of God the Holy Spirit, I bless you. So shall it be. Lord, we thank you. Lift up your two hands and give thanks to him. I appreciate him because your story has changed. Your story has changed. Bless the name of the Lord. His word. He sent his word and he let them. You are healed. Glory be to the name of the Lord. In Jesus name we have prayed. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. Can you shout three powerful hallelujah? I want to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.